Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Modern News. There's a bunch of stories to go over today, so let's just get right into it. I saw this tweet by Roadtronics showing off what looks like a DS capture mod, although it could just be a DS2 monitor output. This is a heavy work in progress project, but I thought this was interesting. It seems like there's this little outside board here that goes to two different monitors. So maybe you can separate the top and the bottom displays to two different monitors using two different VGA outputs. Anyways, I'm not really sure the goal of this project. It just looks like a couple of developers who are trying to mess around with TV output for the DS. We'll have to see if they're gonna open source this project or see if they're gonna sell it as some sort of a kit. Analog had their first Analog OS update the other day. As you can see here, there's a bunch of bug fixes, looks like some dock issues, some miscellaneous game fixes. But the thing I was looking for was some fix for the EverDrive issues. I looked in the comments here, since I really don't have a pocket, I have no way of checking. It doesn't seem like this update did anything to address these EverDrive issues. This user broad nerd said that they tried it with their Game Boy X7 and it didn't work. This is all anecdotal. I'm not sure if it's just this user specific Game Boy. I mean, it could be fixed. I would hope that Analog would address this specific issue in a firmware update. Now, I'm not trying to hate on analog or anything. I'm sure it's a lot of work to gather all the parts and ever drives that you might need for testing and do that testing on a new firmware update, but it's a little disappointing for them not to come forward and say, hey, we're working on a fix for this issue. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see if they do address it in the future with a firmware update. So Energy's got a new GBA HD update, this time with some new pixel grid features, as well as some audio bug fixes. I haven't had time to check out any of the new updates, but if you're building a GBA HD yourself, you should expect some cool stuff when you put yours together. There are also some new case designs in their Discord that feature this GBA HD logo on the top. This one's for the Game Boy Advance SP, and this one is for the normal GBA. I don't think they're really that special, but it is nice to see the GBA HD logo on there. And I know that there's a lot of people working hard to produce these files for people to use for free. Next, there's some more Reventlo news for his Game Boy shells. He's actually working on the back piece here where like the AV and the digital port are. He's working on a back piece here that you could use if you wanted to do a GC Dual that is the Game Boy HDMI mod. That way you don't have to cut the plastic of an original GameCube. You can just pop in one of these brackets and not have to do any drilling yourself. So this is a cool feature that people can use with GC Duals or in the future GC Digital. So you can basically do a no cut mod now for GameCube. We've got a little bit of an ominous tweet from Gamebox Systems announcing this GBHD advance date. 211, which is next Friday. Maybe this is the day that they're going to launch the GBHD for sale, or it might be a day that they're just gonna announce more features about it. I'm pretty excited. I wanna try to snag one of these kits so I can compare it to the GBA Consolizer and the GBA HD especially with that HDMI core that I've been hearing about. We've got a couple of big stories to go over tonight. The first one is the Save the Hero project that Tito from Macho Nacho Productions went over. The Save the Hero project is a game ROM and save reader that can read Super Nintendo, N64, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance games. Long story short, it will allow you to dump the ROMs from all those game types as well as the save files from it. I think this is a really cool idea for anybody who wants to preserve their original cartridges, but more importantly, to save the save files from them. I can imagine going into my closet and grabbing a game I haven't played in probably 20 years and continuing the save file from it. If you want to know more about the Save the Hero project, check out Tito's video. He goes pretty in depth with the actual cartridge reader itself, as well as covering the Kickstarter project. Now, unfortunately, the Kickstarter is already over, so if you're just hearing about this now, you won't be able to order one of these. However, I would like to point out that this project is based off of this Sani Cart Reader. Sani is a developer who open sourced this Cart Reader project. As you can see, it looks a little bit different and I think it's supposed to be designed so that you can drop in different cartridge slots into this board here. Anyways, this Cart Reader project actually supports even more games. It supports, in addition to those other game types, NES, Game Gear, PC Engine, and Wonderswan, and Neo Geo Pocket Color games using adapters. So maybe they don't all have cartridge adapters like this, but there's some kind of adapter that lets you read games off of all those game types. So this is a really cool open source project. I hope we see some more hardware implementations of this for people that missed the Save the Hero Kickstarter. And finally, let's talk about this RetroNAS project that Bob from RetroRGB went over last week. RetroNAS is an open source NAS project that is designed specifically to store and access retro games. I won't go into too much detail because I think you should watch Bob's video. He does a good job of covering the project as a whole, as well as things that are coming in the future. However, I'll talk about a couple of things that I like. I wrote some notes here. Firstly, you should be able to just load any types of ROMs and game files onto this NAS using like a 
Windows file share structure. But then the NAS software has some other network functionality that allows you to network to different devices. For example, the Mister, there is a Mister script that allows you to connect to the retro NAS. As long as your Mister is attached to the network, you can access any ROMs from the net retro NAS without needing to store them locally on the Mister. The other thing that I think is awesome, and Bob made this point in his video, is that there are some integrations with consoles that have larger file sizes. For example, the PS2, if you're using Freemic Boot, you should be able to connect to your retro NAS and load games from the retro NAS onto your PS2 without needing a larger hard drive. You would need the network adapter so your PS2 has connection to the network, but you wouldn't need to store the files on a large hard drive inside the PS2. If we take a look at the retro NAS GitHub, there's actually a ton of different consoles supported. There's a bunch of retro computers supported here, which is cool, but the really interesting stuff is stuff like Nintendo 3DS, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. I'm assuming that you'd be able to do something with the original Xbox too, maybe with some custom dashboard or something. Support for those consoles with larger file sizes to me is the real winner of this project. Let's say theoretically you were to have every game for every one of those systems, you're now in the terabyte file size, maybe even multiple terabyte in some cases. Buying a multiple terabyte hard drive for each one of those systems and maintaining all of the files on it is a big pain in the butt. Versus if you can have one huge network attached storage, you can have any number of terabytes and any number of files on that system. Currently, RetroNAS is only available as software for Linux systems. So if you have a Raspberry Pi or a computer that can run Linux, you can install RetroNAS off of it and run it from there. But for me personally, I'm waiting for somebody to make a Docker container for this project. I have an Unraid server that has a large amount of hard drives. So it'd be cool to have a RetroNAS Docker container on there and use the large amount of storage that I already have. I have a couple of security concerns about some of these features, especially with the old retro computers that have protocols that have long been forgotten and not maintained in a really long time. I'm not a computer network specialist or anything. I don't know if there's any security concerns using these older out of date protocols, but that would be my only concern running retro NAS on my personal network. This project is currently in alpha. So if you decide to try to run retro NAS on your setup, just know that there could be some giant breaking changes if they try to make updates. You just have to be flexible flexible in using this alpha software and your own setup. If you want more details on this project, go ahead and watch Bob's video and subscribe to his channel because I think he's pretty excited to make more content about this retro NAS. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.